COVID changed the fine dining industry. But fast forward a few years, and some places, including steakhouse chains, are bouncing back in big ways. With that in mind, let's look at some of the fastest growing steakhouse chains in the country. Back in 2022, Texas Roadhouse was making headlines. At the time of a restaurant business report, they had 607 locations, and their goal was to get that number up to between 700 and 800. But the chain upped the ante and now have their sights set on 900 locations. How is that plan going? In 2023, Brand Finance named them the fastest growing restaurant brand, citing a whopping 56% increase in value over the course of the year. And that's pretty mind-blowing stuff. At the end of the year, CEO Jerry Morgan reported that every location was bringing in about $1 million, and they were experiencing such a rush of traffic that it was forcing them to rethink their business strategy, specifically investing in expansion and managing increased sales, and the kitchen's ability to handle more tickets. On the heels of that report, 2024 seemed as though it was going to carry that momentum forward. High numbers led to a nearly 20% increase in their stocks, and it was announced that they were planning on opening at least 30 new restaurants by the end of the year. In 2022, Outback Steakhouse took some time to reevaluate what would make it more successful going forward. The findings included putting more emphasis on takeout and delivery options and reducing their overhead. President Brett Patterson explained to CNN Business that post-COVID business had changed drastically, saying, the consumer isn't going back to how they behaved a few years ago. Outback found itself facing an interesting dynamic. In 2023, American locations saw fewer guests but higher sales. By early 2024, things had sort of stabilized, with traffic still down and revenue still up. But there's no better steak than the, uh, the one you can get at Outback Steakhouse. There's no better steak. No better steak. That said, Outback's plans for 2024 remain wildly ambitious. In an early year earnings call, CEO David Dino reported that they would be opening around 18 new locations in 2024, triple the previous year. And although they were looking at closing underperforming locations, they were funneling more money into remodels after completing more than 100 restaurant overhauls in 2023. Here's some really good news for adventurous foodies and steakhouse fans who like to make an event of dining out. Brazilian steakhouse Fogo de Chão is set to make some massive changes in a really good way. In 2023, they reported shockingly good numbers. For the third year in a row, they grew by 15%, and 22 new locations were getting ready to open. Also trending in the right direction were the number of guests on domestic and international fronts, leading them to look at expansion on a global scale. My father often said, you must love the flames before they kiss the steak. New restaurants were also going to get some pretty awesome features, feeding on the success of their elevated bar and craft cocktails, and expanded options for outside dining. What's better than Fogo de Chão? Fogo de Chão under the stars. The organization is so confident in its continued growth that they've got more locations planned through 2025. In late 2021, Black Angus Steakhouse appointed Deborah Shapiro as the new vice president of growth. She told FSR that her plan was pretty simple, saying, You need to find a way to grow sales, but we need to do it in a way that we don't alienate the current audience when we bring in the new audiences. I'm Stuart Anderson. For a great steak at a great price, ranching experience gives my Black Angus restaurant the edge. That started with interviewing longtime customers and employees to see what was at the heart of the business. And it was almost a unanimous answer, family. With that in mind, the goal was clear. Keep favorite menu items, have similar decor in all restaurants, while keeping what made each location special, and bring back popular events like live music and retro dishes. As part of that growth, Black Angus recognized that a huge part of the population doesn't want to go out to a sit-down dinner anymore but is more than happy to invite quality offerings from their favorite restaurant into their home. In 2022, they opened Black Angus Market to allow customers to buy steaks and seafood online, with pickup or direct shipping options. Then, 2024 saw them celebrating their 60th anniversary with a slew of specials, offers, and the addition of brunch to their menu. The expansion plans were working. Black Angus logged a 5% increase in their number of employees. Sizzlers had a rough time lately, and was one of the chains that declared bankruptcy during the strange, surreal time that was COVID-19. But here's the thing, it's back. 
So here's the thing. You can get like a steak and then add the salad bar with right. it. You get the best bang for your buck or you could just get the salad bar. Sizzler came out the other side of bankruptcy in 2023. And when they buckled down to get a handle on their customer base, they found that things hadn't really changed since the 1980s. Customers were still mainly families and groups, sports teams, clubs, classes, co-workers, looking for a good meal in a comfortable place. Along with that came a massive, chain-wide redesign that started in 2023. That's a massive investment. And it's being done with an eye toward nostalgia. While it's still too early to tell exactly how successful the move will be in the long run, things look promising. The number of Sizzler employees is up by a respectable 11%. Measuring the growth of a restaurant like Longhorn Steakhouse is a little more difficult. It's owned by Darden Restaurants, the parent company that oversees Olive Garden, Bahama Breeze, and Yard House, to the tune of managing around 1,890 restaurants. In 2023, Darden announced that they would be opening 100 new locations by the end of 2024. And while they didn't get into specific numbers, that included somewhere between 13 and 20 new Longhorn locations. That might not sound like a lot, but Darden CFO Raj Venom said that caution was the name of the game, and not overextending themselves was key in a still up in the air industry. He explained, We do want to target as much growth as we can. Now we're going to be disciplined in how we do that. We're being a little bit more selective, but still, we feel like we have opportunity to take share. We are still opening quite a few stores. By 2024, the market was showing just how fickle it still was. While Olive Garden had historically been Darden's powerhouse, they actually reported a decline in sales. And Longhorn? They were the only section of Darden's portfolio that reported growing sales numbers. Throughout 2023 and 2024, there were a slew of announcements that new Capitol Grill locations were in the works and would be opening their doors in new markets. Specifically, they were eyeing the suburbs. When they announced a Boston-area location in 2023, it wasn't in the city proper, but in the suburb of Dedham, in a former P.F. Chang's location. Other locations included Fort Myers, Florida, a $2.5 million project outside of Houston, a location in Salem, New Hampshire, and the takeover of another mall space in a Chicago-area mall. Age the beef in-house, we cut the beef in-house, that really gives us control to make sure that we're serving the best steak. Expansions came amid a year of trending growth, with Guest XM ranking Capital Grill among the top performers in sectors that include not only food, but beverages, service, ambiance, value, and intent to return. And that last one? That's important. There's growth, and then there's record-breaking growth. In the last few years, STK, along with sister company Kona Grill, has experienced a shocking 50% increase in same-store sales between 2022 and 2019. And they did it in the face of extreme odds, with parent company CEO Manny Hilario telling FSR, all of this despite commodity headwinds, supply chain challenges, and labor shortages affecting the entire industry. Hilario also noted that it was the biggest growth surge they'd ever seen. Fast forward to 2023, and they announced that a new Kona was going to be opening about every four to six weeks, while STK was making well above projected earnings. By the end of the year, STK was open in Salt Lake City and Charlotte, North Carolina, and plans were in the works for locations in Washington, D.C. and Aventura, Florida, along with at least one other city. And the long-term plan was to raise their numbers from 23 locations globally in 2021 to somewhere in the neighborhood of 200. Jeff Mastro, founder of Steak 48, has staked his reputation on his restaurants, no pun intended. That means Steak 48 has vowed never to use frozen steaks. They're also leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the pack when it comes to sheer luxury. When they opened their Charlotte location in 2020, the $8 million investment led to the creation of 250 jobs. While exact revenue and growth numbers are difficult to pin down, it's safe to say that one of the best indicators of the success of this restaurant is that they're opening new locations. They opened a Beverly Hills location in early 2023. And if there's anything that says pricey, it's Beverly Hills. There's a raw bar, an in-house butcher, and a 3,000-bottle wine vault. In October 2023, San Diego Magazine got a first look at their new Del Mar location. With its own 3,000-bottle wine vault, 
and a 12,500 square foot footprint. Chief Brand Officer Oliver Badgio explained they were getting ahead by setting the bar. This was, as an industry, a little asleep at the wheel for a lot of years. With Steak 48, the DNA changed. In 2018, Texas Day Brazil became the largest Brazilian-American steakhouse in the world. At the time, they had 57 locations worldwide. By making the most of services like DoorDash, they were actually able to weather the pandemic and increase their online sales by a whopping 58%. Fast forward to 2023, and Texas Day Brazil had expanded to 63 locations and was worth around $460 million. In an interview with the Dallas Morning News, President Salim Azrawi told a pretty wild story of how, just 25 years prior, he'd been a 31-year-old entrepreneur with an idea that was so out there that he hadn't been able to get a bank loan to open his first restaurant. Instead, he appealed to a few family members who bankrolled him. To say it paid off would be an understatement. This is the best meat in town. You better visit Texas and Brazil right now. Azrawi explained his attitude throughout the pandemic, saying, Every challenge makes us stronger. What's the alternative? You've worked very hard to establish your business. You can't just do anything and fail. You have to be strong, adapt, stay positive, and be hopeful. And it worked. 2023 was a record-setting year that led to more locations opening in 2024 and the addition of VIP dining cards that would not only bring customers massive savings, but also support the Children's Cancer Fund in the process. Like many restaurants, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse had a rough few years that saw locations close. But by 2022, things started to change, and plans were made to open seven new locations by the end of 2023. In addition, corporate made it clear to struggling franchise owners that they were willing to discuss buying back franchise locations. It was a win-win. It allowed corporate to get into new locations, and it allowed franchise owners to get out. At the time of their early 2022 earnings call, they were cautious despite logging pretty consistent growth over the years, with 2020 the only year that saw a drastic dip in revenue. Perhaps the only thing as unforgettable as the taste of a Ruth's Chris steak is the sound of a Ruth's Chris steak. In 2023, Ruth's Chris got a big boost. They were bought by Darden for $715 million in a deal that surprised pretty much everybody. Darden had faith in the more upscale, expensive section of the restaurant market, as projections of a recession were forecasted to hit the casual dining sector, while upscale markets targeting a wealthier demographic were projected to retain a stable customer base. Meanwhile, new locations were announced, including a location in Los Angeles, one in Wooster, and one in Melville, New York. Upscale steakhouses, it seems, are here to stay.